the 20th century, 21st century is really due to Tesla. Everything we experience in electrical way uh, basically started with him. Uh, prior to him, it was DC, Edison and Co. and all the previous people. But Tesla came up with rotating fields. The Tesla coil consisted of a, of a coil and a, an inner coil and, and an outer coil and a lot of uh, shielding. But basically, um, I don't want to get too technical here, but basically he was able to send waves from this in a manner somewhat like radio waves from an aerial. Except um, radio waves are what are called Hertzian waves. They oscillate across the direction of travel. Tesla's waves oscillate along the direction of travel, a bit like if you drop a stone in water. You see, it's a completely different method of, of transmission of, of radio or electrical energy. And his great initial uh, intention was after having invented AC electric current and generators and all those systems which needed copper wire to transmit energy, he invented this thing to transmit energy without copper wires. But the backers um, of Tesla at the time, Morgan and co, had big investments in copper mines. They weren't very keen on the idea of an electrical transmission method which didn't involve the use of copper wires. But Tesla also realised early on that there were some other things you could do with these. Um, there are reports of the expert, let's go to the next slide please. This is... Um, his transmitting tower at Wardenclyffe on Long Island. He, he started off uh, researching in Colorado and there, was, there are photographs of huge electrical arts of energy flowing out of the top of this thing and fireballs booming off the top of it and disappearing over the horizon and people walking around and get electrical streamers coming out of the ground and connecting with the thing. Um, quite an amazing research uh, given the time. We talk the late 1800s and uh, then he built this device on Long Island with the intention of energising the world. Uh, he found out that he could cause a glow in the upper ionosphere, much like uh, when you see a fluorescent tube glow. He could actually release things to energise the upper atmosphere. And he thought that with enough of them strategically placed around the planet, he could light the night skies for mariners. Um, he found he could attract energy at any distance by a suitable apparatus and you didn't need wires. So you could have an airship with an electrical motor and the correct aerial and one of these pumping energy and uh, you could pick that energy up anywhere on the planet. <coughs> he also found that if you sent three different signals, three different frequencies from this, you could cause that energy to those waves to meet and by varying frequencies you could uh, vary the place on the planet the energy would meet. And when it did, it dropped out of the ether, if you like, and suddenly you got, uh, depending on how much energy you're putting in, you dropped energy, pure energy, out into real-time space. Um, this would often manifest in the form of a plasma, a fluorescent light. There's a plasma around the electrode in the light. So you just see a sudden white light materialise if you put enough energy into that, you could um, actually cause an explosion. In fact, Tesla talks about um, being able to deliver a broad, the, the equivalent of a broadside of all the world's red noise in a microsecond. In other words, he was talking about explosion with the force of atomic weapons. Um, there is a school of thought that believes that what happened at Tunguska was actually a Tesla experiment that went wrong. He was attempting to demonstrate this procedure of a massive explosion. And the thesis goes that the dimensions of the planet and that he was using were not quite correct. And instead of detonating at the North Pole for the Perry expedition to see the event, he actually overshot and it happened in Tunguska in Siberia. This might explain the, the, the energy levels he's using would cause leakage along, along the actual wave trains as they're going. And that might explain the odd directions of travel of the various eyewitnesses. In other words, they didn't see one object. They saw three pulses of energy which coalesced and caused the massive explosion. And then there's quite a lot of uh, reason to believe that, that might be the case. 
I've actually been asked to go every uh, couple of years. I have a symposium in, in Russia on this event. And they've asked me now for about five years to go over there and lecture to them on the banjo markets so because of the similarity of theirs. Um, I haven't had the money all the time to do that, but I hope to. Um, but on the internet, we get a lot of information exchange. And although there's this popular thing about it being spacecraft, there is now an enormous wealth of evidence that suggests it wasn't spacecraft, but it was, in fact, it wasn't even a single object. There were definitely multiple things happening. After the uh, Tunguska explosion, the night skies were lit up around the planet. In fact, people would read the Times in London for about a week at night, in the middle of the night. Daylight disappeared, which is another reason to suspect very strong electrical disturbance of the type that Tesla described in the two to the upper act, uh, Next slide. I've started to research similar sorts of strange light phenomena around the world and I ran into a guy called Tom Beard in the States. He's a retired Lieutenant Colonel from the US Army. He was at one time in charge of organizing the air defense of, of America against Russia. Um, his uh, time of doing that was the late 60s. Um, he's then, after leaving the military, went and did a degree in nuclear physics. And he is probably somewhat akin to the Einstein of today. Um, he's, he's a leading edge theoretician in physics and has gone right back to basics trying to redefine the definitions of physics which are in total disarray. Uh, anyhow, he collected himself for his own reasons, which we'll go into. He collected a, a database, and these are his slides. And this is something that was seen in uh, 1969, Virgin Islands, by a vessel and people on the islands, um, this faint luminescent, smooth curved edge, light hanging there um, in the middle of the night, or early, not early evening, actually, being here. Next slide, please. Um, here's a hemisphere and some strange secondary globes that were seen. Um, again, this is a, a, a ship at sea. Um, disappeared up for 10 minutes, odd globes in the sky, a huge luminous phenomenon. Uh, obviously when uh, vessels observe them, uh, mariners see these sorts of things, they tend to note this down. And it got published in shipping journals. This is not the sort of thing that science likes to publish, because science is a strange beast. They like to know what's going on, or think they know what's going on. If something happens that they haven't got a theory for, it, it's not even allowed in the journal. You know, that might seem strange, but that is how modern science operates. It truly is a bit of flat earth. Uh, next, please. Uh, a British Airways flight heading into Moscow uh, noticed a fireball. Um, it was static in position, just hovered in, uh, in the clouds there emitting light energy. Um, he got this information from the CIA released under FOI. Next please. Here's another one which was actually an expanding hemisphere of light in the Caribbean. Um, seen from a vessel. Small, intense at first, dimmed and in love. Oh, my child. 